In this video, I'm going to share 21 tips and techniques to master ChatGPT. I'll be using a lot of examples and prompts, so prepare to take notes and let's dive right in. Tip number one is to simplify complex documents. Usually I use it for legal documents, any kind of industry research articles or scientific papers. The prompt you can use is rewrite this text and make it easy for a beginner to understand. Let's use as an example Apple's terms of use. So I go to apple.com, copy their terms of use, paste it to ChatGPT and I get a simplified version of their terms of use. It seems much easier to go through these bullet points instead of reading all the legal language on the site. Tip number two is to learn complex topics. My favorite prompt for this purpose is explain it to a 12 year old. It might sound a bit tricky, but ChatGPT can explain complicated topics as if it is talking to a child. So if you ever come across a new subject and you need to understand it quickly, using ChatGPT would be much better than just going to Wikipedia. Here's an example. Explain string theory theory to a 12 year old. Send the message and you'll get a concise and very easy to understand explanation which would give you a general idea about your topic. And this doesn't have to be a 12 year old, you can be more realistic and say for example explain how atomic bomb works to a 25 year old non-physicist. Tip number 3 is to use the 80-20 rule to learn faster. You can use ChatGPT to save so much time while learning something new. One of the techniques here is to use the 80-20 rule. Let's have a look at the prompt. I want to learn about Ukrainian history. Identify and share the most important 20% of the learnings from this topic that will help me understand 80% of it. ChatGPT is giving us a structured list of the key points and I find it extremely useful because you don't have to browse the whole web or read a few books to learn something. You get the key points about a particular topic, the highlights, right? And then tip number four, you ask the follow-up questions. And I want to highlight the importance of the follow-up questions because ChatGPT is a conversational AI model which will use the information provided in your current message and any relevant context from the conversation history to generate a response. But whenever you start a new chat, that would be a new conversation with a new context. So as a follow-up question, you can ask ChatGPT to tell you more about any point from the list above. And this way you learn deliberately about the specific topic you need, so you save a ton of time on filtering out unnecessary information. Let's say you want to learn this article on biometric proof of personhood by Vitalik Buterin. Instead of reading the whole article, you can just copy it and then ask ChatGPT to identify and share the most important 20% of the learnings from this article to help me understand 80% of it. Paste the article, hit enter, and ChatGPT will process all the information and provide you with a nice summary including the most important insights from the article that would help you understand it. Tip number five is to learn new skills with ChatGPT. For example, I want to learn how to use Photoshop to make my YouTube thumbnails look really shiny. I go to ChatGPT and type I want to learn Photoshop. Create a 30-day learning plan that will help a beginner like me learn and improve this skill. Attach links to any free resources you see fit. I get a well-structured plan on how to approach this and in the end I can find some links to free tutorials that I could use throughout my 30-day plan. This is a great way to save some money that you could have spent on the Udemy course, for example. Tip number six is to format your responses. The output that you get from ChatGPT does not necessarily have to be in the form of plain text. It can be in the form of code, table, tweet, email, essay, presentation, and so on. Here's a quick example of formatting the ChatGPT response as a table instead of plain text. So I ask it to create a table of the top 10 cities for digital nomads sorted by popularity. Include columns for internet access, nightlife, and average monthly cost of living in USD. And now it will provide us with a great table which includes all the columns I requested. You can also provide ChatGPT with a piece of existing existing information and ask it to reformat that information to a table or whatever it is you need. Tip number seven is to assign roles to ChatGPT. This is definitely one of my favorite tricks. It is very helpful. Before you ask a question or command ChatGPT what to do, you can pick a role or character for it to act like. Then every time ChatGPT responds to you, it will act in that chosen persona. For example, my question might be, what is the best way to grow a YouTube channel? As always, I'll get a good and structured answer. Now I will assign a role to ChatGPT. I'll say, you are a poet.
poet. What is the best way to grow a YouTube channel? And the response I get is now in the form of poetry. Beautiful. Obviously, you can use roles such as teacher, lawyer, or personal trainer. And the responses from ChatGPT will be adapted according to the assigned persona. Another idea is to use the role assignment to have a personal tutor on any subject. For instance, I can ask ChatGPT to act as a Photoshop Pro and then ask how to make my skin tone shiny. It will provide a step-by-step -step guide, which I find really useful. Tip number eight is to use ChatGPT to improve your writing. For me, that's the basic functionality of ChatGPT. You can use it for generating text as well as revising your existing writing. So whenever I need to write something, I just put it out, not trying to make it perfect. Then I go to ChatGPT and use the following prompt. Proofread my writing below. Fix grammar and spelling mistakes. Make suggestions that will improve the clarity of my writing. And with this prompt, ChatGPT works great. Nine out of 10 times, I get really decent results from it. Tip number nine is to change the tone of your writing. Here's a list of some handy tones that I often use. You can make a screenshot if you want. Formal, confident, humorous, professional, academic. Those work very well for me. Let's quickly check how academic tone would change my email. So I type, dear Professor Blake, I am sorry I did not do my homework for today. Can you give me another chance and wait until the next week? Thanks, Bogdan. Then I type, change the tone of the email above to academic. And simply by changing the tone, you can get a decent email written according to academic standards. Sometimes it can be too much, so I might delete a paragraph or two and then send it out. Tip number 10 is to summarize long text and documents. That might sound obvious, but many people don't actually use it. This is more of a reminder to use AI at any time you need to process a lot of information and get only the key insights. The prompt I usually use would be summarize the text below and give me a list of bullet points with key insights and the most important facts. Tip number 11 is to create to-do lists. ChatGPT is great at organizing a chaotic text into a well-structured to-do list. For example, sometimes you can receive an email from a colleague or manager with a lot of text and different tasks to do. So what you can do is go to ChatGPT and ask it to prepare a to-do list from this email. Copy and paste that long email and you will get a clear and concise list of tasks that you are asked to do. Tip number 12 is to use step-by-step -step guides. ChatGPT can guide you through the creation of documents, web pages, or basically any complex tasks. For instance, you can ask ChatGPT to guide you through the creation of About Us page for your website. It will give you questions to answer and once you are done, it will generate the content for you. I will type, I want to prepare About Us page for my website. Ask me questions and once I answer them, generate a copy and a structure for that page. When you send this request, ChatGPT will do exactly as you asked. It will throw out questions you need to answer to make a customized page for you. Once you answer them, it will help you make a well-structured draft for your web page. It's all about making complex stuff a bit simpler. And by the way, if you need to prepare a web page, a presentation, or any kind of work-related materials, AI has become a huge helper and there are many tools apart from ChatGPT that are specifically designed to do each of those tasks. I have already covered the best of them in my other videos, so make sure to check them out. You can save a ton of time and money using those tools. Tip number 13 is to generate new ideas. At this stage, one of the best ways to use ChatGPT or AI in general is to have it as a co-pilot in your brainstorming workflow. You can generate new ideas and also evaluate or refine your existing thoughts and ideas. Here's a real life example from last week. You see, I spent a lot of time working with the computer, sitting all day long, and this is becoming a big problem. Bad blood circulation, back pain, and there are other issues caused by this lifestyle. So I asked ChatGPT, I want to keep my blood flowing, but I had to work with my laptop for 10 hours a day. Please generate the best ideas for me to stay healthy. It generated a whole bunch of tips. Most of them were obvious, but it is still great to have them organized. However, there was something in that list that I had no idea I could use. It suggested using an underdesk bike or an underdesk treadmill. That was a fantastic suggestion for me. I purchased a bike right away, and now I have the option to keep my blood circulating while sitting and working. My doctor never suggested this idea, but ChatGPT did, so it's always good to use it for a kind of second opinion. Tip number four. 14 is to delegate your research. ChatGPT can write an entire report for you. However, it will require a few follow-up questions because it would go beyond the limitations of a single response, at least with the free version of ChatGPT, which is GPT 3.5. So I start with a general prompt. I am creating a report about the AI industry. Research and create an in-depth report. It will provide a structured outline and key information to include in your report. What I do next is ask it to write each chapter 
chapter one by one. For example, I say, write the whole first chapter, and it provides a decent piece of the report that I can copy and paste right away. Then I type again, write the second chapter, and I do the same for all the chapters until the whole report is ready. And this also demonstrates how important the follow-up questions are when you work with ChatGPT. Tip number 15 is to use generated content. This is another example of how to use follow-up prompting. The idea is that you create some information within ChatGPT and then you use that information to generate more content in ChatGPT. For instance, I ask ChatGPT to provide me with a list of the top 10 richest countries in the world. Then I ask it to write a blog post on the main contributors to GDP in the countries from the list above. So I'm using the information generated by ChatGPT to create more custom content within ChatGPT. And it writes a decent blog post elaborating on the GDP of each country from the list above. Some of you might have noticed that so far I've been using only the default version of ChatGPT, which is GPT 3.5. It is free of charge and I assume that many of you will not upgrade to a paid version, so all the tips discussed today are applicable to GPT 3.5. However, there are many opportunities with GPT 4, such as the integration of plugins or web browsing capabilities. The plugins are basically third-party integrations that make ChatGPT even more powerful. Using them, you can do a lot of extra things, such as ordering from your local grocery stores. There are plugins that enable you to search and compare prices from online shops and many, many more. This definitely deserves for a separate video, so let me know in the comments if you'd like a video exploring the best plugins and web browsing tricks, I would be happy to prepare it. Tip number 16 is to create personalized plans. Based on your unique needs, whether you need to learn a new language or create a workout routine, you can provide ChatGPT with your characteristics and get a personalized plan prepared. For example, I want to try a keto diet for one month. Prepare a personalized plan for me. Input your unique characteristics and send it off. As always, if you're not happy with the output, you should follow up again and again until you get what you need. Tip number 17 is to prepare for exams or interviews. Not only you can use it to summarize the knowledge and extract the key insights, as I previously showed in this video, but also you can make it interactive and use ChatGPT to quiz you. For example, I'm going to input the most important aspects of Ukrainian history which were generated by ChatGPT before. Then I ask it to generate an interactive quiz for me. One by one, describe the important events in Ukrainian history, and I have to answer with the name of the event. If the answer is correct, proceed to the next question. If the answer is incorrect, provide the correct one, and then proceed to the next question. I'm going to send this off, and now ChatGPT will generate some interactive quiz questions. Let's see how it works. I'm going to answer the question, and now ChatGPT should confirm whether the question is correct or not, and then move on to the next question. This is great not only for studying, but for job interviews as well. You can describe the position you are applying for, ask it to act as an interviewer, and request interactive questions. Tip number 18 is to use the ChatGPT mobile application. They say today all the information is available in your pocket. I just wanted to share how easily you can access that information. I've added the ChatGPT application to my locked screen, so I don't even have to unlock my iPhone, I can go directly to ChatGPT. The biggest advantage of the mobile app is that you can ask questions using your voice instead of typing. For me, that's extremely useful. Another great thing about the app is that since you are logged in, it keeps the history of your requests and you can check your previous chat logs that you might have done with your desktop, for example, and that's really convenient. Tip number 19 is to use prompt generation services. By now, you should understand that the quality of ChatGPT responses heavily depends on the quality of your questions or prompts. And there are people that have tested hundreds or thousands of prompts, and those prompts that work the best are gathered in various databases or apps. Some of them are designed as marketplaces where you can pay for a specific prompt that you require. One of such marketplaces is promptbase.com. Other services can provide a lot of amazing prompts for free. One of them is flowgpt.com. I really like how you can filter the prompts by category or search directly for what you need by by typing the keywords. Here you can start a conversation with ChatGPT directly from this site, you can check out the prompt and just copy it, or you can preview the examples to have a better idea of how this might work for you. Tip number 20 is to share ChatGPT thread links. Before I discovered this feature, whenever I wanted to share some insights with my friends or colleagues from ChatGPT, I used to either make a screenshot of the whole conversation or just copy the whole text. Now, there is a share button at the top right corner which you can use to generate a shareable link to a particular chat thread 
that you want to share. Just a little tip in case you haven't noticed that one before. Tip number 21 is to export your chart logs. This is a reliable method to safeguard and store your valuable information, especially when you are acquiring new knowledge and wish to preserve your chart history. To export your chart logs, navigate to the lower left hand corner of your screen and click on the three dots. From there, proceed to the settings menu followed by the data controls section. Click export data and confirm the export. You will shortly receive an email containing all your data. After the email arrives, you can download the export in a zip file. After opening it, you can access and review all your chat logs and conversations. All right, I hope you find this valuable. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you in the next video very, very soon.